the winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me. I've been complaining about the weather all week. Oh, okay, not complaining so much as being an informative, and telling you how cold it's been. And I prefer the cold over the heat any day. But it's been cold the last couple of days. And so I'm seeing a lot of people get colds and flu and ugh. That's the only bad part about it being cold, it being winter. It's a lot of things going around. You don't want any part of that. I don't want any part of that. So hopefully you and your family are staying safe, staying away from any kind of viruses that may be going around this season. Bundle up. It's cold outside. But again, what's going on out there has nothing to do with what's going on in here in the lab room on this Friday evening. And so, I always wanted to take the opportunity to wrap up the NFL's starting five. I always wanted to do it on a very slow day in the National Football League. I always said that I would do it after every rookie had wrapped their season up had a chance to kind of take it all in for what it was worth. And I think we've had a chance to do that now. And so I'm here to put a bow on the NFL's starting five. Very slow day in the National Football League, not a lot to get to. So this is fitting that today on Friday on the program, I combined the two in the lab room and NFL starting five. Really Go over the season that was, and again, we've already done that for the whole starting five. Right now, what I really want to do is get to the playoff edition of the NFL starting five because we had three rookies, the first time ever, that three rookies made it and started in the postseason. And so we're going to talk about those three rookies, what they were able to accomplish in their first ever postseason journey. And... Where did it start? Where did it end? It was longer for some, short for most. And so we'll get to all of that today on this edition of In the Lab Room slash the NFL's starting five. So without any further ado, let's get to the NFL's starting five. Now, let's meet the NFL's starting five. At number five, a 5'11 rookie out of Wisconsin and the starter of the Seattle Seahawks, introducing number three, Russell and second overall draft pick in the 2012 NFL Draft by way of Baylor and the starter of the Washington Redskins, welcome number Number 10, 10, Robert Griffin III. And 
And at number one, a 6'4 rookie and first overall selection in the 2012 NFL Draft by way of Stanford and the star of the Indianapolis Colts. So as the playoffs started, you already knew right off the bat that Robert Griffin III and the Redskins were going to take on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And for me, that was a bittersweet game. Of course, I'm a Redskins fan, and you all know that. If you don't, you need not look any further than behind me to figure that out. And so... It was a little bittersweet because all season long I have been tracking these rookies, talking about them, and I wanted to see nothing more than them succeed in the postseason. You talk about guys at great lengths all season long, and you start to be attached to them. And I've been following these rookies all season long, closer than some of the other quarterbacks around the league. I mean, I had become enamored with them because what they had embarked on this season was nothing short of great. I mean, You've never seen anything like this in the National Football League before. I mean, three quarterbacks taking their teams to the postseason in their rookie seasons. And it's not like these quarterbacks came into the season midway and the team was half decent and they put them over the top. Like a Colin Kaepernick. No, this isn't what happened. These quarterbacks started from day one. And they were able to go through the bumps and bruises, the ups and downs of the NFL season, withstand all of that, persevere enough to get their teams to the postseason. And so I just found these quarterbacks fascinating. And I really didn't want to see Russell Wilson and Robert Griffin III play against each other because I didn't want to see one of these quarterbacks have to bow out. So we were guaranteed to see one of these two go home. It was a known fact. You knew one of these teams weren't going to advance to next round. So I would have preferred if each of them was in one of the two games on Wild Card Weekend instead of playing against each other. But that's not the way it unfolded. Redskins won a division. Seahawks were the fifth seed. Redskins were the fourth seed. They had to play each other. So we start there in the NFL starting five today with the number two quarterback, Robert Griffin III going against the number five quarterback, Russell Wilson. And keep in mind, those aren't their rankings. If you want their rankings for the season, Robert Griffin III was number one. Russell Wilson was number two for the season overall rank in the NFL starting five. So we're talking about the two best quarterbacks in the NFL starting five squaring off against each other. Now, Going into this game, Robert Griffin III was not healthy. And we all knew that. But he had gutted it out, really showed some mental toughness because I know he was hurting. I know it was hurting him to be out there. But that's what this game is about. Lacing him up, strapping it up, knowing that you're only 60%. But your 60% means more to your team then you standing on the sideline. And so Robert Griffin III played hurt against the Eagles. He played hurt against the Cowboys. The Redskins won both of those games. He did a lot less in those games, and I thought that was a great game plan by the Redskins to protect him. In this game, though, they pushed the envelope a little too much, and it came back to bite the Redskins. Thought that they should have employed the same philosophy, the same game plan that they had against the Cowboys. Run Alfred Morris, run. Run him 27 times. Run him 30 times if you have to. He was successful early in this game, was Alfred Morris. But instead, the Redskins opted to ride the back, the shoulder, the legs of Robert Griffin III, and it backfired. Robert Griffin III in this game was 10 of 19. 
52.6% completion percentage. Now, if you've been watching Robert Griffin III all season long, you know that's not like him. And so this injury definitely affected him. And just to give you some perspective as to how this injury affected him, the Redskins jumped out to an early 14 to nothing lead in this game. On the strength of Robert Griffin III, this running game of the Redskins, they controlled the game at the outset. The first two possessions, the Redskins marched right down the field, scored touchdowns, and they looked impressive doing so. But on that second touchdown drive, three plays before the touchdown itself, Robert Griffin III re-injured himself. You could see it. He got up limping noticeably, more so than coming into the game, and he was never the same after that. Up until that point, he was 5 for 7 for 62 yards. And so he was doing his job, and he was well on his way to having another stellar performance. Got injured and was never the same. The Redskins never scored another point after the injury. That's how bad it was for the Redskins. So only 84 passing yards. So he had a bulk of his passing yards before the injury. Once he got injured, he could not plant and throw the football. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what he says. I don't care what anyone says. If you watch the game, you could tell he had trouble planting. There were some easy throws that he missed. Throws that he wouldn't miss if his eyes were closed and he was 100% healthy. He just flat out missed guys wide open. And they weren't 30 yards down the field. They weren't 50 yards down the field. They weren't 15 yards. There were guys 7 yards away from him that he just flat out missed. Couldn't throw an accurate ball for them to catch. Now, guys didn't help him out. There were some drops in his game. But all in all, Robert Griffin III was not shot, and it was all because of the injury. Two touchdowns. He had those two touchdowns prior to the injury. One coming after the injury, but he didn't have to do anything on that drive. They were at the seven-yard line when he injured the knee. They went another three yards up, and then he threw a four-yard touchdown pass. So he was able to get through the knee injury on that drive, but it got progressively worse as the game wore on. He was basically reduced to next to nothing. Once the Seahawks saw that he was injured, they saw blood in the water and light sharks. They went to attack. 77.5 rating. During the course of the season, he ended the season with a 102 rating. His completion percentage, 65.6. So these numbers, not even close to the way he performed throughout the regular season when he was much more healthy. So, again, you have to keep that in mind when taking this game into consideration for Robert Griffin III. Five rush attempts, 21 yards. There were so many yards left on the field by Robert Griffin III due to this injury. There were times where... He might have scored a touchdown. The lanes were so big. But he couldn't, he couldn't seize those opportunities. The knee just wouldn't allow it. And really, I would have preferred it if he had no rushing attempts in this game. Because I really think those rushing attempts early in the game really set up and set the stage for him to get injured. I thought that they really put a lot of strain on his leg. And uh, really would have preferred to see the Redskins use Alfred Morris in that running game that was so effective early on in this game at one point. Alfred Morris had 11 carries for 60 yards, you know, almost six yards a carry, and they just flat out abandoned the running game. Don't know what the reasoning was there, but it is what it is. He did not have a typical Robert Griffin III football game, and it was apparent, and it was because of the knee injury. However, Russell Wilson also played in this game, and I tell you what, Russell Wilson was... Good. I won't say he was great in this game because he's seen better days. But he did enough against a Washington Redskins defense that had been playing better of late. And really, they stifled this Seattle Seahawks offense early in the game to the Washington Redskins defense. But Russell Wilson, as he's done all year, and I called him Mr. Steady. I told you, he had probably been the steadiest any member of the NFL starting five all season long. There weren't a lot of stinkers. He had one terrible game against the St. Louis Rams. You could argue that he didn't play his best football against the San Francisco 49ers the first time around in San Francisco. I'd argue against you and tell you that he had a lot of drops in that game. Guys did not help him out. He put some balls on the money that if they were caught, it'd be a different game. And so I'd argue against you and just say he had one bad game against 
the St. Louis Rams in St. Louis. But from week one to week 16, week 17, he's had the most growth of any quarterback in the NFL starting five. And it was on display in this game. He started out rough. Things weren't going right. They were down 14 nothing. He didn't hang his head. He rallied the troops, started to play better football, started to complete some passes. Next thing you know, this Seattle Seahawks team was not only in the game, they took the lead and won the game. And so Russell Wilson had a large part in that come-from-behind victory by the Seattle Seahawks. He went 15 of 26. Again, not a great number. He struggled in this game early on. 57.7% completion percentage. So, again, he didn't have his best game either. But it was enough. He did enough to help his team win. 187 passing yards. One touchdown, no interceptions. A 92.9 passer rating, which is a good number. This is a guy that finished right around 100 in the National Football League in his rookie campaign. And so he's a quarterback that can get it done. He's not going to turn it over a lot. He's going to usually complete a nice high percentage of passes. That's what he had done throughout the course of the season. And so this number really isn't indicative of how good he's been. But 92 is still a good number. That 57% completion percentage, not really what Russell Wilson has been about this season. He's a 62% completion percentage guy. So, again, his numbers were down, but he did enough to help his team win this football game. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. He also tacked on eight rushes for 67 yards. And to me, that's where the difference was in this game. On crucial, critical third downs, he extended drives by using his legs. He really started to gash that Redskins defense in the second half with his legs. And then it started to fall into place because the Redskins, who were playing some man-to-man -man coverage early in the game, had to resort to zone because he was starting to run too much. And that's when the hole started opening up in the secondary. That's when guys started running open like Zach Miller. And that's when things started to go downhill for the Redskins defense. And so I thought Russell Wilson put a lot of pressure on his defense by running the football. And it opened up passing lanes, and that's when the Seahawks were able to start getting it going offensively. Russell Wilson was the difference in this game for the Seattle Seahawks. Make no mistake about it. If there's a quarterback in this game that can't run, that's a pocket passer, I don't know if the Seahawks come back and win this game because the Redskins were playing solid defense. The running ability of Russell Wilson caused threats, posed problems for this Redskins defense. It put pressure on them. Forced them to change their defensive strategy. And the Seattle Seahawks were able to take advantage of that. Win this game 24-14. to Robert Griffin III hurts himself at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And tries to gut it out. He can't go. He's hurt and his leg buckles under his weight. The play before he gets injured, he's tackled and he's brought down on his leg forcefully. Bent backwards on that knee. And then flung down. The next play, there's a bad snap. He tries to reach for the ball. Knee gives out. He goes down. We, later we find out there's a torn ACL. There's a torn LCL. He's done for, of course, the next six months minimum. And so now what's in question is will he be ready for the start of the 2013 season? That's a huge question. I honestly have no worries, no doubts. I think he'll be back. I think he's a guy that works hard, and he'll be back, ready to go. Don't want him to rush it at all, though. Take as much time as you need. If you need to miss the first two games of the season to make sure that you're 110%, do that. Don't come back at 90 and and be running at a 90% clip. No need to do that. We want the Robert Griffin III that we got from games 1 through 13. We don't want the Robert Griffin III that we saw after the injury against the Baltimore Ravens. We want the Robert Griffin III we had previous before that. The one that's agile, mobile, and can throw from the pocket and be accurate doing so. We don't want anything less than that. And so take as much time as you need. This isn't a rush job. This is a process, and you're a big part of that. And so Robert Griffin III needs to make sure that he's healthy. Meanwhile, Russell Wilson moved on to the divisional round 
of the postseason as he and his Seattle Seahawks teammates got it done on Wild Card Weekend in Washington. They moved on to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Want to interject here and go and talk about another Wild Card Weekend matchup, this time between Andrew Luck, the number one member of the NFL starting five, in his debut in the postseason as they took on the Baltimore Ravens, did the Indianapolis Colts. So they traveled to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, Ray Lewis's last home game as a Raven. And I thought that under the given circumstances, Andrew Luck performed as he had done all season long. You got the same exact Andrew Luck that you've gotten all season long. Nothing changed in this game. And to his credit, I will say, Andrew Luck has been the same quarterback all year long. You've gotten the same Andrew Luck all season long. Hasn't always been the prettiest. Never was efficient. But when it was all said and done, he got the job done. Wasn't able to say that in this game, though. Wasn't able to say that, however, against this Baltimore Ravens group on the road. And you know that the Colts put a lot on his shoulders, a lot on his plate this season. And Andrew ate everything that was on that plate. He ate it all. And now look, he made a mess while doing it. He had to wipe his mouth a couple times, pick up a few crumbs off the floor, might have spilt his drink a little bit. But when it was all said and done, everything the Colts put on his plate, Andrew Luck ate it up. He responded. They asked him to chuck it over 40 times a game. He was okay with that. Sometimes you got interceptions. Every time you got incompletions. But at the end of the game, you were able to say, Andrew Luck got it done for us. We won the football game. And that's the most important part. And he was under some tough circumstances in this game. The guy that you've called your interim head coach all season long and who has been the play caller, who's been pulling the strings offensively all season long, Bruce Arians, Goes down in pregame meal. He's not feeling well. He's ill. They call the ambulance. They take him out on a stretcher. He's not with the team when the game starts. He's not there for the whole game. Instead, he's in a local hospital watching the football game. So the guy who's been calling the plays that's intimate with you and in sync with you, in tune with you, isn't calling the plays for this game. Instead, it's Todd Christensen who's calling the plays. And I thought he did a bang-up job calling plays. I didn't think there was a huge drop-off. The only thing I think Bruce Arians might have done in this game is take more shots. But I thought they took their fair share of shots in this game. And I don't think there was a huge drop-off from Christensen and Arians. And so, honestly, I would say there was no drop-off. Andrew Luck still chucked it 54 times, which if it was Arians, he would have chucked it 54 times. And so, you got the same Andrew Luck that you got the whole entire season. Andrew Luck was 28 of 54 in this game which is what Andrew Luck has been all season long. This amounts to a 51% completion percentage. Andrew Luck was a 54% completion percentage guy during the regular season. This is exactly the problem I had with him. Too many of his passes hit the ground. Now, again, when you ask a quarterback to chuck it 54 times, what do you expect to happen? It's going to hit the ground, but for Andrew Luck and his Colts offense, the ball hits the ground way too much for me, way too much for my liking. And again, it happened in this game. 54 attempts is way too many, but that's what the Colts have been asking of Andrew Luck all season long. And nothing changed in this postseason game. If they were going to win, it was going to be on the shoulders of Andrew Luck. They knew that, and the Ravens knew that as well. Those numbers equated to, as I've said already, a 51% completion percentage. And Andrew Luck has never been a guy that, Throws it 54 times and gets 41 completions. See, some people in the league, a Drew Brees, a, a Eli Manning, a Tony Romo, they throw it 54 times, they're getting 37. They're getting 41 completions. Not Andrew Luck. If he chucks it 54 times, that's attached with 28 completions, 24 completions, 29 completions, 31 completions. Not 41. And so you got what you've been getting all season long with Andrew Luck in the completion department. You look at his yards, 278 in this game. Here was a guy that led the NFL starting five with passing yards well over 4,000, 4,300 and some change on the season. And so 
He's a guy that can throw for large amounts of yardage in a game. Because if you're throwing it 54 times, yards are going to come attached to that many attempts. And so it didn't surprise me that he threw for well over 200 in this game and was approaching 300 in this game. No touchdowns, one interception. Again, this came late in the game. They were down by a lot. He needed to start throwing on just about every down. The Ravens knew that. They were physical with these receivers. It happens. I really don't put this interception on him. I believe it was a tipped pass. It was picked off. Again, when you're down by as much as they were in this game, you got to start throwing. The defense knows it. Everyone's eyes are in the backfield looking to make a play. They made a play. It happens. I, I won't put this on him, but again, all season long, he was a high incompletion guy, very inefficient offensively. And the turnovers came down at the end of the season. I will give him credit. At the beginning, he was a turnover machine. He'd throw two touchdowns, but he'd have two or three interceptions. By the end of the season, it was two touchdowns, no interceptions. One touchdown, no interceptions. And so he was able to get over that one-to-one -one ratio that you'd like from a rookie quarterback. And so in this game, had the one interception, no touchdowns. I won't hold it against him, though. Thought he had a really good showing against the Baltimore Ravens. For what they were doing offensively and what the Ravens were doing defensively, I thought he did what he could do. Rating, the passer rating for that type of day, for this type of performance, not very good. 59.8. And again, this was a guy that was in the 70s in the regular season in passer rating. And so... He's not too far away from where he was in the regular season. He wasn't as bad in the regular season, not on this scale. Not a 50s guy, but again, in the 70s, not much better than this. Maybe that interception goes away and it's one touchdown and he's probably right around where he would have been in the regular season. Again, when you throw as many times as you do and there's as many incompletions, there's no touchdown and an interception, your passer rating is going to be in the dumps. That's what happened here. But again, Andrew Luck hasn't been a high passer rating guy all season anyway. So hard for me to think that it was going to change in this game. Four rushing attempts, 35 yards, no touchdown on the day on the ground for Andrew Luck. This was a guy that had five rushing touchdowns during the regular season. Not afraid to stick his nose in there once they get around the goal line. And he didn't have that opportunity in this game. They were never really that close to scoring the football where the Indianapolis Colts the one time that they did get down there, I believe they fumbled the football. And so it was that type of day for the Indianapolis Colts. As they didn't score a touchdown in this game. Three field goals were all they were able to muster. Nine points. Not going to get it done on the road, let alone in the playoffs on the road. And so they lose this one 24-9 due the Indianapolis Colts. They were dominated in this game by the Ravens defensively. They were out physical, outmanned. And so it happens. Again, I, I thought that Indianapolis Colts needed to play their best football in this game. I, I had said all season long that it was okay against the Tennessee Titans, against the Jacksonville Jaguars, against the Kansas City Chiefs. It was okay against teams like that to be 28 of 54. You know, one touchdown, no interceptions, one touchdown, two interceptions. It was okay to have a completion percentage in the 50s. Low 50s in this case. It was okay to not have the most efficient game offensively. Against the Detroit Lions, against the Kansas City Chiefs, against the Tennessee Titans, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can get away with that against teams like that. Because you're better than them. You can get away with not having your best offensive performance. And still win against those teams. In the postseason, however, you have to play your best football. What you've got... I need all of it. I need you to be Anita Baker in the playoffs, giving you the best that I've got. I need everything. And if you don't come with your best performance, you're not going to win because everyone in the postseason is there for a reason. They're good. And the Colts, of all the teams in the postseason, I thought that they were the worst team. Not saying that they weren't a good team. They won 11 games this season. So I'm not saying that they weren't a good team. I was just saying that of all the teams in the postseason, they were the one that I thought could be beaten the easiest. And so it proved to be right. I thought they put up the least amount of resistance of any team in wildcard weekend. And so 
They were what they were all season long. You are who you are, and they were who I thought they were. And the Ravens did not let them off the hook as they go down 24 to 9. And so, Andrew Lux, ultra successful rookie campaign ends as well as Robert Griffin III does in Wild Card Weekend. It's only fitting, however, that the last man standing in the NFL's starting five is your fifth quarterback in the NFL starting five, the last to be drafted, the one that had went unnoticed for a large portion of the season, the one that no one was talking about, the one that was the third round pick, the other four in the NFL starting five, all first round picks, the one that was the third round pick was the last man standing in Russell Wilson. Only fitting, only fitting that the one that everyone slept on in the draft all season long, no one was talking about, was the last man standing in the postseason in Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson was the last of the NFL starting five to be remaining. When all the dust settled, all the smoke cleared, Russell Wilson was the last man standing in the NFL's starting five. So let's get to his next tilt. In a divisional round, Against the Atlanta Falcons on the road, hostile environment, hostile crowd. Atlanta Falcons, number one seed in the postseason. Overall, number one seed in the NFC playoffs. And you just knew this was going to be a tough environment for them to go into and win. And it looked like for a minute there that they were overwhelmed, overmatched by this whole environment, not just the Atlanta Falcons team. It just looked like a team that might have been a little shell-shocked. They felt confidence. They got to this game riding a nice, sizable winning streak that dates back to the regular season. And then they just ran into a buzzsaw called the Atlanta Falcons early on. This game was 20 to nothing at one point in the second quarter. They go down, they score a touchdown before the half. Falcons respond right after that in the second half with... Another touchdown to extend the lead back out to 20 points at 27 to 7. And that's your fourth quarter score when Russell Wilson took over in this football game. And he was huge. They mount a comeback due to the Seattle Seahawks. They take the lead at 28 to 27. An improbable comeback. You did not see this coming when they were down 20 to start the fourth quarter. They come back, they take the lead, only to have it snatched away from them at the very end on a last-second drive by Matt Ryan in this Atlanta Falcons offense, capped off by a Matt Ryan field goal, sending the Atlanta Falcons to the championship weekend in the NFC playoffs, sending the Seattle Seahawks and Russell Wilson home for the rest of the season. And what a dramatic game this was. What a heck of a game it was for Russell Wilson. He played well enough to win this football game. One of the best performances you will see out of a rookie quarterback in the postseason. You can't do it much better than Russell Wilson did it in this game. He absolutely shredded this Atlanta Falcons defense in the second half, primarily in the fourth quarter, when his team needed it the most. Russell Wilson played his best football. And that's a mark, and I say it all the time, that's a mark of a really good quarterback in the National Football League. When your team needs you the most, how do you respond? I give you the ball and tell you I need it. When you give me that football back, you say, I got it. Here you go. And that's what Russell Wilson did. His team trailed by six. They needed it. Four minutes to go in the game, he gave it to them. Took him down the field, scored a touchdown, what should have been enough to win this game. The defense, as we've seen through parts of this season, could not hold the lead, however. This defense is a great defense, but a great defense once they have a lead. You give them a lead late in the ball game, and we saw it against the Chicago Bears. We saw it here. They could not hold that lead. Could not hold a team and stop them from going down the field 50, 60 yards in a short amount of time and stopping them from kicking a field goal. Falcons did that and they won the game. But let's talk about Russell Wilson because 
He was sensational in this game. He was phenomenal. They should have won this game. And if they would have won this game, it would have been all because of number three, Russell Wilson. So let's talk about his day. 24 of 36. This was more like the Russell Wilson we've seen all season long. 24 of 36, which is a 66.7% completion percentage. This is much more like Russell Wilson than that Redskins performance. This is a guy that completes up over 60%. He completes it at a 60% clip. And so 66.7 sounds about right. And he was absolutely awesome in this game. 385 yards. That is unlike Russell Wilson. This was a guy that did not throw for 300 yards not one single time all season long. Preceding this game, he had not thrown for over 300 yards. And then he explodes in the most important game of the season for 385. All the while doing it while completing 67%. So impressive by Russell Wilson. Just absolutely outstanding in this game. Two touchdowns, one interception. Again, much more like Russell Wilson in this game. Two touchdowns, one interception. He'd like to have that throwback where he was picked off, but again, he had an exceptional game. Nothing that he did in this game warranted you to say, man, he looks like a rookie. He looked like anything but in this football game. 109.1 passer rating. Again, more along the lines of what he was this season. Again, 100 as a passer rating this season. He finished up the season with a 100 passer rating. This is more along the lines of that than that Redskins performance the week prior. So he was just phenomenal in this game. 109 passer rating usually wins you football games. And again, he did all that he could do, and he did enough to win his game. Defense just wasn't able to hold at the end of this football game. Seven rushes, 60 yards, one touchdown. He was phenomenal with his legs. And again, the threat of him running opened up gaping holes in that Atlanta Falcons secondary. They had to play zone coverage. They had to keep their eyes on him at all times. He still was able to scamper for 60 yards on seven rushes. He still was able to get a rushing touchdown. But what that did was loosen up that secondary. And Zach Miller must have been open all game long. The Falcons must have thought that Zach Miller either had on a Falcons uniform or that he was an official. Maybe he had on a Zebra uniform or something because he was uncovered all game long. I mean, this guy should have probably did have well over 160 yards receiving. Seemed like he had about 250 yards receiving. Because every time you looked up, Zach Miller was running wide open in his Atlanta Falcons secondary. And I tell you what, Russell Wilson was not missing anyone. He was on in this game. Against the Redskins, he missed a couple of deep balls. He missed a couple of shots that could have bust that game open, that could have changed the course of that game. And made it a lot easier for the Seattle Seahawks. He just missed in the rest of this game. He was not missing in this game. He was dialed in. And he had his team in a position to win. They just weren't able to get it done. So they lose that game 30-28 to to the Seattle Seahawks. They lost this game despite an absolutely picture-perfect performance from Russell Wilson. You take away that interception. And we're talking about as good as you can do from the quarterback position. Forget that he's a rookie. I'm talking about period. We're talking about almost 400 yards passing. 67 percentage clip. Rushing touchdown, 60 yards rushing. Can't do it much better than that. But they weren't able to get the win, but Russell Wilson did his job. In of the members of the NFL starting five, I told you that he was the one that improved the most. You saw it in this game. Never throwing... For over 300 yards all season long, doing it in his season finale. Lifting his team to heights that no one thought was possible. Russell Wilson proved to be one of the best quarterbacks, not only in the NFL starting five, but in the National Football League in the 2012-2013 season. And so, that's it for the NFL starting five. They're all done. Their seasons are complete. Robert Griffin III was the only one in the NFL starting five to be elected to the Pro Bowl. Matt Ryan got injured later on in the championship game, and so he can't go to Hawaii. Russell Wilson is now going. 
Tom Brady bowed out of the Pro Bowl. Andrew Luck is now going. So all three of these members of the NFL starting five that made the postseason have all at some point, some way, shape, or form been invited to Hawaii as Pro Bowl participants. Some deserving more than others, but at the end of the day, they're all there, and I'm happy for all of them. Congratulations to them all. Phenomenal season by these guys in the NFL starting five. Even Ryan Tannehill and Brandon Whedon, I thought they did what they could with what was around them. Whedon probably could have done more, but again, these guys embarked on a journey that few have seen in the National Football League, were able to complete it, and really help their teams look toward the future, have hope that this team or their franchises can turn it around in 2013. And so that's going to do it for the NFL's starting five. Been fun. Been glad to bring you coverage of these guys all year long. And what a unique bunch this was. And it was a joy to be talking about them all season long. I thank you for joining me here in the lab room. It's been fun on the NFL's starting five. And so that'll do it for the Friday edition of In the Lab Room. I combined the two. And so that's a touchdown. That was the extra point. Felt like I've been talking for long enough. So we're just going to go ahead and end it as we ended all the NFL starting five videos. Thank you for joining me here on the NFL's starting five.